Wales, the land of song, dreams and druids, a country rich in tradition and spectacular scenery. The Vale of Festiniog, part of Snowdonia National Park, with its panorama of mountains, lakes, rivers, wide estuaries and sandy beaches. This little train will bring back memories to many of us as it sets out on a journey that people come for miles to enjoy. Leaving Porth Madog, it's now crossing the Cobb. And how's that for a backdrop? On its 13 and a half mile journey up the Vale to Blyna Festiniog. This is the way to be an engine driver. What a journey, what scenery, what history. For this is the famous Festiniog Railway. The mile-long embankment, known as the Cobb, was built in 1807 by William Maddox to divert the Glaslyn River. It took him four years. In 1836, the Festiniog Railway was built to a gauge of just under two feet to transport the true blue Welsh slate from the mines in the mountains at Blyna Festiniog down to the harbour at Porth Madog. The full trucks of slate ran all the way down to the harbour by gravity with a horse riding on a special wagon on the rear to return the empties up again. Here, the slate was loaded onto sailing ships to put a roof over the heads of millions on the great continent of Europe, as well as Asia and America. This went on for nearly 30 years. Then the first steam engines were introduced and passenger service started. The railway continued to prosper as tourists were then discovering the wonders of Snowdonia for their holidays. That's called a double fairly locomotive, by the way, setting off from Porth Madoc Harbour in 1936. Here's Bessie Jones, the station mistress at Tannebruch for many years, exchanging the single line token. The trains puffed through marvellous country to Blyna Festiniog, where passengers could change at the old LMS station for the Conway Valley Line to the North Wales coast. But traffic declined, and when the war came, no more passengers were carried at all. It seemed like the end of an era when the line closed altogether in 1946. But the fire still smouldered, and in 1954, a band of enthusiasts, optimists some people called them, sweated to cut away years of derelict growth and gradually got the railway going again. Using Prince, the older steam loco, now with a new boiler, and restored coaches, the line was reopened section by section as progress continued. From the train today, the ever-changing vista presents mile after mile of sheer delight. There's also a full steward service of light refreshments, so no one goes hungry or thirsty. And there's draft beer too. Passengers enjoy a comfortable ride in a variety of coaches of varying ages, but all efficiently maintained to the highest standards. And that goes for everything on this railway. The Vale of Festiniog is an area of outstanding natural beauty. Trees, valleys, lakes, they're all here to beguile the eye of the traveller. And as you go higher and higher, naturally the views expand. Apart from the tunnels, of course. But there it is. The beauty of North Wales for the enjoyment of the Festiniog passenger. Here at Viacht, 
trains traverse Britain's only spiral railway, built by dedicated volunteers known as the Deviationists. The line here is higher up the mountainside than the original track, the course of which can still be seen. The deviation story is a saga of determination and toil. In the late 1950s, part of the old track and a tunnel was flooded to build a dam to form a lake for the new pump storage electricity generating station, Atana Grisio. Our group of enthusiasts had fought this plan as hard as they could, but with little avail. It went through. But there was no way that our determined bunch would have their goal to get tracks to Blyneye once again thwarted, especially by a small thing like a power station. So they got a bit devious. They built embankments, cuttings, and even a new tunnel through the mountain. They burrowed like moles. At times it seemed impossible, but they never lost heart or volunteers. For 13 years, this dedicated and tenacious group bent their backs every weekend and holiday time to make their dream come true. They then laid two and a half miles of new track high on the hillside and above the power station lake. When all was completed, trains could then operate as far as a temporary halt by the lakeside, and very popular it was. By then, Excavating the site for a new station at Tan Agrisio created no major problems, as assistance was given by various contractors. At last, everybody could say goodbye to the excavators, dumper trucks, the mud and machinery. It had all been worthwhile. As the last lorry disappeared from the site, the great day was just around the corner. June 1978, when the first official train ran through from Porth Madog to the new station at Tan Agrisio. Even the rain couldn't dampen their spirits. It gave the railway a new sense of purpose because now passengers could go all the way from Porth Madog to the outskirts of Blyna Festiniog with a regular bus link connecting to the town centre or the British Rail Station for the Conway Valley Line. out of the tunnel and along the lakeside. That's the power station, very popular with visitors, just like the railway. This is Tana Grisia, with some wonderful walks around the hills. Close by is the Electricity Board's Tourist and Information Centre, where interesting visits can be planned. Like a trip to the power station, where conducted tours are available. You can also take a bus for a memorable tour by the mountain road to the Stulan Dam, a further thousand feet up from the railway. From the top you can see right across the whole vista of Snowdonia, a delight for photographers. So in many ways things turned out just fine. 
But the object of the exercise, to link the railway with the centre of Blina once again, still had to be completed. And the same group of enthusiasts tackled the job. And fairly complicated it was too. New bridges to be put in, new safe level crossings, and new track to lay. This is the section we are travelling over now. On time arrival at the British Rail and Festiniog Railway Joint Station. The official opening took place on a glorious sunny day in April 1983. What a day that was! Bands and, of course, a Welsh choir, VIPs, lots of smiles and speeches. All in all, an important civic occasion. The Right Honourable George Thomas, then Speaker of the House of Commons, officially declared the restored Festiniog Railway open. George Thomas, now Viscount Tonopandy, flags off the Festiniog and British Rail train simultaneously from the new station. And everything went just perfectly. The chairman of the Festiniog Railway now introduces the distinguished guest. 1832, inspired people began the Festiniog Railway. It runs through the heartland of some of the most beautiful places in the whole world. And the character of that railway has survived tremendously testing years. It is wonderful that from the four corners of the United Kingdom there are men and women whose heart beats faster when you say the word Festiniog Railway because they love it. They give their time, they give their money and they give their love to helping to keep this railway going. And it's more than just a tourist attraction. It's going to improve the quality of life. Now the station is right in the heart of uh, Blina Festiniog. Today, Blina Festiniog is one of the top tourist attractions in Snowdonia. From here, people can travel up to Llandidno by the Festiniog link. And that's the link with British Rail, of course. Everything's been done to make the visitor welcome at Blaenau, and naturally that means slate has to have a high priority. There's a permanent exhibition showing all the aspects of the industry, but probably more exciting for adventurous souls are the slate caverns just outside the town at Llechweth. There you can take a different kind of train, one that will take you into the heart of the mountain and show you how the slate miners really earn their living. It's moving and impressive. The genuine atmosphere of the old mine has been recreated. The guides are all ex-quarrymen. You can't beat that for authenticity. They have about a quarter of a million visitors every year. And many take a trip on the Deep Mine, Britain's steepest underground passenger railway.
Across the valley is Glodva Ganol, a mountain tourist center, where you can watch giant slate saws at work, cutting the slate into pieces, which the craftsmen dress into the familiar material you see on your roof. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. Mind your fingers. Back at the other end of the Vale is Porthmadoc itself, a very busy town with many tourist facilities, comfortable hotels, interesting shops for bargain hunting, and a craft centre where you can buy products such as useful gifts made from local slate. Or original woollen items of quality that come from nearby Bryn Ceir Woollen Mill. Here, some of the power is still provided by a water wheel. These looms are used to produce some lovely traditional Welsh designs. Or how about the Porth Madoc pottery? where you can buy some of their artistic and attractive products, and they'll also let you have a go at making something of your own. Porth Madoc, of course, has a seafaring history. They even say that Prince Madoc set out from here to discover America before Columbus was thought of. If you like the smell of the sea, the Maritime Museum, with its old sailing ship moored alongside, is definitely for you. And just along the coast, you will find quiet harbours like Bortha Guest. Or you can enjoy sand games at Black Rock. Very bracing, yeah? Sailing, swimming, fishing, it's all to be found. If you want it, it's here. And if you are really intrepid, you can go rock climbing at Tree Madog, just a short distance away. But let's get back to where we started, the harbour station. Everything revolves around the railway, and everyone enjoys the journey. Even man's best friend makes no bones about it. That's Prince again, who started the ball rolling after the war. Built in 1863, he's now the oldest steam loco in the world, still operating on its original line. Here's Mountaineer, heading another train across the Cobb, where at the southern end, Boston Lodge workshops keep everything rolling. All the maintenance is done here, all the repair work, and the building of new stock. There's a small professional staff helped out yet again by those enthusiastic volunteers. Here's the powerful double engine, Earl of Merioneth, built at Boston Lodge to cope with very steep climbs, arriving at Tanabulch, the halfway point on the line. This is ideal rambling country, there's a nature trail that goes right through the woods and down to the lakeside, a pleasant picnic site. Nearby is the Snowdonia National Park Study Centre, where residential courses are held. <laughs> 